Good morning, everyone. Is it still the morning? <clears throat> My name is Andre Quijada, and I want to share a story with you. A story about being born on the wrong side of the opportunity divide. The opportunity divide is the chasm separating the money, the jobs, and the opportunity from those who would give anything for a chance to prove themselves. Well, that's where, that's where Europe comes in and all of its partner companies. That's where all the faculty and instructors who listened, who pushed, come in. That's where all the friends and family who never stopped believing in us, who knew we could be more. That's where all of you came in. Now let us give you a round of applause. <laughs> the opportunity divide, a perplexing concept that rings exceptionally true for my peers and I. And me, <laughs> this is what has kept someone like me gasping for air in the deep end with no way up. The opportunity divide is the reason I was working graveyard shifts, bookended by opening shifts. For those of you in the, in the industry, we like to call that nightmare a clobening shift. <laughs> Still, I was forced to pick my poison at the end of every month. Do I pay for electricity? water, or the rent. This was the reason I was barely making ends meet to live in the lower bottoms of West Oakland. Living in a neighborhood where I've been robbed and assaulted multiple times, in a neighborhood where I've seen someone get shot trying to run and hide in my yard, This is what left me defeated. Excuse me. I sold everything I could, packed the bag, and hit the road. I spent that year of my life hitchhiking from the Southwest Desert to the Pacific Northwest and then across the country to dip my toes in the Atlantic. I spent that year of my life li living in bushes, behind law offices and real estate firms, but my morale never died. I learned the hard way that nothing was just going to just happen. I had to be the one who made the leap from one end of the divide to the other. Get paid while you learn computer skills. The year up ad that lured so many of us in, like a siren song. It sounded too good to be true. I, I honestly thought we were all about to join a cult. <laughs> Don't drink the Kool-Aid. But it addressed the hardest part about getting an education, the money. The money you pay to attend and the money you miss out on while sitting in class instead of working. This is what had me questioning my commitment to a program that I had never even heard of. Not only does Europe empower 2,500 bright young minds per year with the technical and communication skills needed to integrate into today's fast evolving tech market, but they also provide each of us with a stipend helping us focus our energy on learning. That's what helped me make the decision to join. But everyone joins Europe to foster a different set of skills. For me, it was working on my ability to communicate. Learning computer skills and programming was something I took to right away. I could dig it out of a book, or my preferred way, wait for the movie to come out and watch it on YouTube. But where do you learn how to lead a meeting, or learn the jargon being spoken in said meeting? So you're not just nodding along ad nauseum, as if you totally know what's going on. Who's going to prepare your confidence? As a young person, working alongside colleagues with Ivy League degrees and decades of experience, 
And who's going to help you prepare an elevator speech? So when the, you're on the elevator and the president of the company walks in, you have something better to say than Mondays, eh? <laughs> At Europe, <laughs> we spend a lot of time building our community. I hazard to say, on behalf of all my colleagues, this came quite easy, right? <clears throat> Before we knew it, we were like a hundred little green peas in a pod. <laughs> Hundreds. <laughs> and these peas were my key to success surviving the rough times. I must admit, we quickly learned taking advantage of this opportunity it wasn't going to be easy, but it was something we did together. So I want to give a shout out to all my peers in the Europe community who helped me when it got a little scary for me. In the middle of the first five months, I was attacked and robbed on my way home from work one night. But as weird as it sounds, it couldn't have happened at a better time. I was starting to forget my reason for joining Europe, and after the attack, I was an epic disaster. The weight of my personal life, work life, and my time at training was starting to feel like too much. Bills were piling up, and I was losing sleep contemplating quitting Europe and picking up a handful of kitchen jobs. I started to show up late, and my performance started to slip, which led to the first of two recommitment speeches. That was tough. <laughs> a speech where I share why I'm falling behind and what I'm going to change in order to earn the chance to be an intern and fight for my piece of the pie. For me, both speeches <clears throat> allowed me an opportunity to reconnect with why I was here in the first place. I learned the skills, and now I even had the opportunity, but what I really needed was help, and that was the hardest to admit. That's when the Europe community reached out and showed me I wasn't alone. For the first time, all these people around me actually cared about seeing me succeed. I was inspired and made a complete change. After that, every single day, I had someone checking in on me to make sure I was at 100%. <sighs> Where are you? Naz Ali. You would call me every morning to make sure I was awake. Sometimes I would lie and say I was. <laughs> I was really in between snooze three and four, maybe five. I still made it on time, so don't worry about that. Uh, JT, Padi JT Padilla and Manny Roa bonded with me and helped me see I was not alone in thinking I was. Danielle Viance and my team of nerds in QA who let me know it was all right to be me and fly my nerd flag. Also, thank you, Dan Hastings and Rory McLeisett for leading that nerd parade. <laughs> Roy Spencer, raise your hand, I can't, there you are. Roy Spencer, for being a great example of how I could use my charisma to impact someone's day. Even at my internship, where I was out of my newly found safe zone, employees of GE who were part of earlier Europe classes and my peers out of this current batch of interns made sure I knew they were only a text message away. And I gotta say, being placed in the cloud infrastructure services team played out like synchronicity. Thanks to matchmaker Marcus Cook. Where did I just see you? There you are. Matchmaker Marcus Cook. On the corporate engagement team, uh, I had the best mentors, as I, as I like to jokingly call them, the Jedi Masters of the Cloud, and Jonathan Matthews and Dennis Rende. Sorry, Dennis, I know you don't like Star Wars. Get him, nerds. <laughs> I can't say everybody's name here, but each of you know individually how you've impacted me. And I want to say from the bottom of my heart, I will forever appreciate you. Looking back, the jump to the other side of the opportunity divide was difficult and terrifying the entire time. It still is. But now with the higher point of view, I can start to think about how I'm gonna give it back to the universe. I've gone from the street to being in a boardroom, successfully pitching an innovative app to a team of executives from a Fortune 500 company. 
from an outsider to a member of the cloud infrastructure services team at one of the oldest companies in the world, General Electric, from the hood to having dinner with the CIO of Gap Inc. to talk about my future, from homeless to class 14 graduation speaker, from a punk to a nerd, from part-time barista, part-time delivery guy, part-time pizza guy, part-time intern, to a full-time access administrator on the network operations center team. <laughs> I am Andre Quijada, only one of the many, many microcosms in this room that represent the macrocosm that is Europe. Thank you.